This is KGW News at Noon. And we start with those new rules going into effect Friday here in Oregon. The governor is concerned about an increase in COVID-19 cases and is rolling back some guidelines statewide. These changes will affect restaurants, bars, and people with young children. KGW's Pat Doris was listening in to Kate Brown's news conference today. So Pat, fill us in on the changes she made. Right, Brenda. Well, the governor had said the next step would be to close businesses. That did not happen today. She has not gone that far yet. But she is requiring kids who are five years old and above to wear face masks now statewide. And that will include in classrooms if the kids end up actually physically going to school. The governor is also requiring bars and restaurants to close at 10 at night instead of midnight. She's also requiring people to wear masks in gyms even while they work out. And she's lowering the size of indoor gatherings from 250 down to 100. Here's what I want Oregonians to know. I don't make these decisions lightly, and there are no easy choices. It's up to all of us to do our part to look out for one another. Oregon, we are going to get through this together. The governor also said she's keeping her requirement for house parties to be 10 people or smaller. Again, that's across the state. And she said a number of the new cases involve tourists who are visiting here from other states. So now she's talking with governors in other western states to try and figure out what to do about that. They may end up requiring people from hot spots to quarantine when they come to Oregon. That rule is not in place yet, but they're definitely talking about it. Back to you. Yeah, a couple big headlines. Pat Doris, thank you for the update. Turning now to the pandemic across the country. California's confirmed cases hit 409,000, passing New York for the most in the nation. Meanwhile, the CDC says millions more Americans could be infected and not even know it. And President Trump reverses course, now saying, yes, wear a mask. NBC's Tracy Potts reports. President Trump back in the daily briefing with a new message on masks. If you can, use the mask. When you can, use the mask. And grim predictions about COVID-19. It will probably, unfortunately, get worse before it gets better. The CDC now believes cases in some areas could be 10 times higher than reported. Patients with no symptoms spreading the virus. That number being much higher means the death rate is a lot lower. And the $1 trillion Republicans want to fix the economy? It's fiscally irresponsible, and they should be ashamed of themselves. He's a Republican against borrowing money. People need to feed their families. People need to pay the rent. we got a lot of work to do to get something passed by the end of next week. Differences over money and how the virus spreads. Clearly, it is the Trump virus. As America breaks another record for the first time this month, more than a thousand deaths in a day. Plus there's another concern now, coronavirus in the military with more than 20,000 reported cases and the rates of infection tripling in just the last six weeks. I'm Tracy Potts. We're also tracking an outbreak of cases in Hood River involving student athletes. At least five kids at Hood River Valley High School are infected. They'd been meeting at the school for conditioning sessions. The mother of one of those athletes says her entire family of seven now has the virus. There is absolutely no way possible I will be sending my kids back to school. Um, and, and school definitely needs to be shut down. And this is why school just, we just need to close to protect these kids. County health officials are now asking sports teams to stop gathering for the next two weeks. In Washington, coronavirus is changing the high school sports schedule. Football, volleyball, and women's soccer will now start in March when they can play outside in larger groups more safely. And lower risk sports like softball, golf, and tennis will start this September instead of in the spring. Winter sports, including basketball, wrestling, and swimming will start in January instead of December. You track it all that? Obviously a lot of juggling. Officials say this schedule is extremely fluid and it could change again.
Okay, now to some new video this noon after another night of massive protests in downtown Portland. This morning, crews were out putting up fences around the federal courthouse. Look at that. You can see that the courthouse there behind the fences, all covered in spray paint. More than a thousand demonstrators gathered outside overnight. Student journalists from South Salem High School took some video here of protesters barricading one of the courthouse doors. And police say several protesters kicked and pounded on the plywood covering the glass. Just after 11 o'clock, federal officers responded to all of that, firing tear gas and other munitions into the crowd. It is a cycle that repeated itself throughout the night with protesters regrouping and federal agents using chemical munitions until the crowd kind of thinned out around 3 a.m. On social media, we were monitoring that and we did see federal agents make arrests. But Portland police say they did not engage with the protest at all and they did not make any arrests. New at noon in court today, a lawsuit asking for a restraining order against federal officers here in Portland. The two sides wrapped up arguments this morning, and now we wait for the judge to decide. Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum filed the suit, and as Kyla Boshi tells us, it's just one of several challenges for deploying federal officers. For weeks, protesters have clashed with federal officers outside the U.S. courthouse in downtown Portland. Now that struggle moves from outside on the street inside to the courtroom. On Wednesday, a judge will hear from lawyers representing Oregon's attorney general who sued federal officers for using unlawful tactics. Because it's outrageous, it's a violation of the Constitution, and we're not standing for it. Oregon's AG is seeking a temporary restraining order to restrict federal law enforcement in Portland after allegations federal officers in unmarked vans were arresting protesters without probable cause. The feds say they acted appropriately. Well, I think it's restricting, you know, my freedoms. In court filings, several Oregonians, including Jennifer Arnold, said fear of federal officers prevented her from exercising her rights to participate in peaceful protests. It seems like a very controlling maneuver to silence people, to restrict their movement, their freedom, and then, you know, to prevent them from speaking out. Similar lawsuits have also been filed on behalf of state lawmakers a Portland church, the Western State Center, and the ACLU. They have slightly different theories and legal approaches, but all touch on the same issue, the role of federal law enforcement sent to Portland to protect federal buildings through an executive order signed by President Trump earlier this month. Jeff Dobbins, law professor at Willamette University College of Law, predicts decisions could come quickly on whether to grant temporary restraining orders. The judges are used to getting these kinds of emergency requests, and certainly in a situation like this where there's a lot of uh, pressure from the community and, uh, and obviously the stakes are very high, it, it's not unusual for judges to, to have a hearing and to be able to resolve something like this uh, on the order of just a few days. Legal experts say the way cases are resolved here in Oregon could serve as a bellwether to the rest of the country if federal law enforcement is deployed to other unwelcoming cities, as the president has suggested. Kyle Boshi, KGW News. We've been following the demonstrations for eight weeks now, and you can catch up on all of our reports on the KGW YouTube page. There's now a playlist dedicated to our coverage of Portland's protests. Let's step outside for a moment. We want to show you the view from our Wells Fargo Sky Camera. So we're seeing some big changes in the weather department. I know a lot of you embrace those clouds out there after a few very hot days. Meteorologist Joe Ranieri is tracking the cool down. And Joe, I got to say, I think it feels good. I do too. It's going to be a little bit easier to be outside because, of course, the last two days we saw temperatures in the upper 80s, low 90s. Now we're going to be seeing a big drop, a dramatic drop, if you will, too, later on this afternoon. A walk out there right now, you're seeing a mix of some clouds and sunshine, but you'll notice the temperature is nearly 10 degrees. 10 degrees cooler uh, this time right now from what we were seeing just 24 hours ago. That's kind of the trend throughout much of the metro area along the Oregon coast. Take a look at Newport. You're looking at temperature deficit of almost 15 degrees, but not to worry. We are going to be seeing warmer temperatures here heading into just ton time for the week. And I'll talk about that in the detailed forecast in just a few minutes. But along the Oregon coast, 57 degrees over in Cannon Beach. Start to see a little bit of a sliver of blue skies there above the ocean and uh, throughout much of the coastal area, we're looking at temperatures upper 50s to low 60s. So much cooler and cloudy out there today. 
But sunny skies here in just the next couple of hours. I'd say by three, four o'clock, we'll be seeing widespread blue skies. Cooler really today, tomorrow, and Friday, but looking into the weekend, we're going to be seeing warmer temperatures as highs get into the 80s for Saturday, close to 90 degrees by the second part of the weekend and the early part of next week. And uh, if you're liking the heat, I think you're going to be liking the extended forecast. I'll talk more about that in just a couple of minutes. Brenda? Shoot, you're going to be popular with everybody with that seven day. Thank you, sir. Ridership on public transit has plummeted during the pandemic, but e-scooters have rebounded big time. Coming up next, we'll tell you how companies are making sure your ride is clean before you take it for a spin. And if you are ready for your NFL football fix, tough news today. We have an update on preseason and the number of players testing positive for COVID-19.